Ms. Griswold, when you've been criticized as too partisan to be Secretary of State, you've said that protecting elections is about the truth, that it's not a, a partisan issue. And this race is an interesting test to that because your Republican opponent is not an election denier. She's one of the most forceful voices in the Republican Party against conspiracy theories. But yet, you've misleadingly suggested that to your supporters that you're running against an election denier. You've accused her of pandering to extremists. You basically painted her as a Trump-supporting MAGA Republican. Is that protecting elections or is that just partisan? Um, well, that's untrue, Kyle. Um, I know you're referencing an email that the campaign sent out uh, several months ago, and it doesn't mention Pam Anderson. It mentions Tina Peters and Mike O'Donnell, two election deniers who were in the primary against Pam. Uh, and actually, I've said over and over again that my opponent is not an election denier. I've said that in front of her. I've said that to the media. Uh, and you also put some words in my mouth calling her a uh, MAGA extremist. Again, I have never said that. I don't think she is a MAGA extremist. Uh, I do think it's it can be confusing to voters and to me uh, that while Pam isn't an election denier, she campaigns and says she supports election deniers. I think that can be confusing. I think it was confusing in the primary how she said she would crack down on ballot harvesting, a conspiracy theory made popular by Donald Trump in the extremist movie 2000 Mules. Those are things that can confuse voters. Ms. Anderson, you in fact have campaigned alongside election deniers, including the Republican candidate for Lieutenant Governor Danny Moore. But you recently criticized a scheduled event featuring Moore and fellow election denier FEC, FEC United's Joe Oltman. You called him reprehensible. Can you explain to us why you are comfortable keeping company with some election deniers but not other election deniers? So I am a registered Republican and a center point of my campaign is to go to voters where invited to push back on false misleading information and conspiracy. It's been a real honor to go and go talk about my campaign for 10 minutes and, and then answer questions for an hour and 45 minutes. And I haven't seen my opponent doing that. 30 second spots saying, trust me, I'm your government, isn't going to get us through this. I have pushed back against President Trump, uh, former President Trump, candidate President Trump, and anyone who seeks to mislead it. My opponent <coughs> won't even stand up to her party when they spent millions of dollars propping up the candidate saying exactly what she says she hates. So I've done it when it's difficult. I will continue to do that against either party that misleads our voters. But I'm trying to understand the difference. Why will you literally stand shoulder to shoulder with the Republican lieutenant governor candidate, Danny Moore, who's an election denier, but then another election denier, Joe Oltman, you said that the two of them campaigning together was reprehensible. Where's the line? Actually, when, when Danny Moore was appointed by the governor candidate, Heidi Ganahl, I said that I was disappointed in that appointment because of his comments. What I will continue to do is not um, wag my finger and, and lecture people about their questions, but talk to them. I don't think that we, if we vilify people with good conscience like voters, we should push back on candidates. I've reached out to all of them to provide information, opportunities to visit with county clerks, to learn more about elections, and I think that's made a difference. I will continue to run my own race, who I am, representing all voters, regardless, in a nonpartisan way, not dividing people and vilifying them. All right, thank Can you. Can I jump in here, Kyle? One last thought on this, yes, please. I, I just want to explain how dangerous this is to Colorado elections and why it's so personal to me. Uh, you know, the big lie is why Tina Peters breached her election infrastructure. The big lie is why the Chafee County clerk works behind bulletproof glass. The big lie is why a man was just sentenced to 18 months in prison for threatening my life. Uh, this has real effects. These lies are destabilizing our democracy. Uh, and Coloradans can always expect from me never to campaign with election deniers, to stand up. If there's a Democratic election denier, I will stand up to them. If there's a Republican, I will stand up to them. Coloradans can also expect me to very clearly state I will never vote for someone trying to take away our right to vote. That's another distinction between my opponent and me. She refuses to say that she will not support Donald Trump if he went, runs again. Is that the I, case? That is absolutely false. I've said as a principled election official that I won't tell you who I will vote for, but I will continue to push back. I will also tell you that there is no nuance for me ever on this issue. And this misleading rhetoric from my opponent, who, by the way, did send out a campaign email within minutes of me winning a primary, trying to link me to this, which is not true. It's misleading and false, which is incredibly ironic, considering you spent $1.1 million of taxpayer money this summer against misleading information. All right.